Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mathematics School. I'm Hansa, and I'm back with yet another question from a previous math tournament that is also very much relevant to J. The concepts that we will be using for solving these questions are very simple, but it is really delightful to see how these simple concepts are used to make a question that amuses the mind. So before starting the question, I would like to remind you people to please hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, then please subscribe the channel. That actually motivates us to bring more such content on YouTube. Chale, now let us start with the question. So what is the question? As you can see, the question says that the graph of the equation x plus y is equals to integral part of x square plus y square consists of several line segments. Compute the sum of their length. Compute the sum of their length. How we are going to handle this question? See, first of all, the basic concept that I will be using here is I'm going to write down the equation. This is the equation. And because right hand side is an integral part, I can just assume that the right hand side integer that they have written is equals to n. Okay, n be an integer. So I can write that n belongs to integer. And more specifically, I can say that n is not negative. n is greater than or equal to 0. Obviously, because sum of two positive quantities cannot give you the integral part as negative. So I'm just assuming that let this be equals to n. And obviously, n has to be greater than or equals to 0. Okay, so what all curves they have given us? They have given us one, this curve, which actually represents a straight line. But when you are going to get this result, you will be getting this result only when x square plus y square is actually greater than or equals to n, but less than n plus 1. So basically what I am getting is x plus y is equals to n under this condition. But what do you mean by this condition? This condition actually indicates the annular rings, the portion between two circles, one with the radius root n, the other one with the radius root n plus 1 and having the center at 0 comma 0, right? But now what all values of n are to be taken? Shall we take n is equals to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and keep on doing it like this till infinity? So I need to find out the constraint on n. What actually is the constraint on n that will help me in identifying the solution of the question? So for that, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to use important concept. It shows us a concept that I'll be using. The concept says that RMS value is always greater than or equals to the arithmetic mean, right? Here, I'm going to construct two numbers, x and y, and for them, the root mean square value, the root mean square value will be greater than or equals to arithmetic mean. So what is the arithmetic mean we can write? x plus y divided by 2. Now, x plus y, we have seen that it is a positive quantity for the question. I'm taking the square both sides, which actually gives me the value x square plus y square is greater than or equals to x plus y whole square divided by 2, right? For this question, we have seen that x plus y is equals to n. It is equals to an integer n. And from this inequality, what I'm getting is x square plus y square is greater than or equals to n square by 2. So actually, I'm getting that x square plus y square is greater than or equals to n square by 2. And at the same time, it has to be less than n plus 1. You cannot have x square plus y square greater than n plus 1 because otherwise this equation will not be valid. So because it is an integer, you are taking it as n. We have another constraint on x square plus y square, which says that it has to be less than n plus 1. So n basically is a positive integer or it can be 0. And we have this condition on x square plus y square. Or you can say that, yes, I got another relation or another condition on n. What is the condition I'm getting from here? I'm getting that n plus 1 has to be greater than n squared by 2. Writing it properly, cross multiply and rearrange the terms. Minus 2. Greater than, sorry, it will become less than 0. Or you can write it as n minus 1 ka whole square minus 3 less than 0. Right? This is what we will be getting. What I'm going to do in the next step, I will be finding out the value, possible values of n here. So solving the inequality gives me that n is greater than 1 minus root 3, but at the same time, it has to be less than what? It has to be less than root 3 plus 1, right? It has to be less than root 3 plus 1. So from here, I can conclude that because n is a integer which can be 0 or positive, what are the possible values n can take? Greater than some negative means it can take the value 0. It can take next integer 1, 
It can take the value 2, but it cannot go beyond the root 3 plus 1. So the only possible values that we have for the present question for the values of n are 0, 1, and 2. So if you take n is equals to 0, 1, 2, 1 by 1, karke, now we will be solving and we'll try to identify what exactly the curve we are getting with x plus y is equals to integral part of x square plus y square, right? So n ke possible values we are getting 0, 1, 2. Now I'll proceed with that. Let us start taking the cases. The first case that I'm considering is n is equal to 0. But when you take n is equals to 0, you're actually taking x square plus y square greater than equal to 0, less than 1, right? Only in that case, you can have the integral part as 0. And what about the other curve? We will have x plus y is equals to integral part of this number that is 0. So it is representing a circle having center 0, 0 and radius 1. And it is a straight line y equals to minus x, right? So inside the circle on this line, what is the curve we are going to get? We are going to get a segment of the line that I will trace later on. First of all, let us write down all the possible values of n and the corresponding curves. Like here, we will have x square plus y square greater than or equals to 1 but less than 2. And the corresponding line will now take the form this one. Similarly, third. So n is equals to 2 is the final case where I will be taking x square plus y square greater than or equals to 2 but less than 3. And we will have x plus y equals to 2. That's it. Now I cannot take further any more values for n here. Now what to do? The next thing that we can do is, obviously what we have to do is now we have to trace all these things and we have to identify which segments are we talking about in the question. So basically you can see that all the three cases may I have concentric circles. Radius 0, 1, 2 and 3 kesat I am going to trace them. So I will trace three circles over here. So let's start with the three circles. Having the center at 0, 0. So I have just traced the coordinate axes. Now I will be tracing three circles over here. So three circles with radius 1. Then we have the second circle. And the third circle I am going to trace with the radius 3. So here are the three circles we are talking about in the question, right? Okay, so now after tracing all these three circles, the next thing that we are going to do is now we will trace the line. The first line that I need to trace here is the line y equals to minus x, right? y plus x star. I'm going to trace y equals to minus x now. So tracing y equals to minus x, this is the line that we will be getting. But I have to consider this line only which is inside the circle having radius 1. So I'm just going to mark the boundaries or you can say I'm just going to remove the portion which is not there in the first portion or in the first case when you are taking n is equals to 1. So I got the portion A, B. Second line. Now what is the second line that I have to trace? The second line that I need to trace is x plus y equals to 1. x plus y equals to 1. Okay. So we will be tracing the next line x plus y equals to 1 and we know that the first circle is intersecting x axis at 1 comma 0, y axis at 0 comma 1. Joining these two points will give me the second line. So I'm going to trace the second line now. Tracing the second line, but it has to lie uh, in the region between the first circle and the second circle. So first of all, let us trace it. So I traced it. And after tracing it, I'm going to consider only that portion, which is between the first and the second circle. Okay, the portion which lies between the first and the second circle. So I'm just going to remove the portion which is inside the circle having radius 1. The annular region between the circle having radius 1 and 2 is to be considered. Okay, that is what I'm taking now. Now coming to the third circle, third line. Circle having radius between root 2 and 3, right? Root 2 and 3 and the line is, uh, is to be x plus y is equal to 2. The line that we need to take is x plus y equals to 2. x plus y equals to 2. You can notice one thing. Okay, when you check the distance of this line from origin 0, comma 0, what you are getting is root 2. The distance of this line from the center 0, comma 0 is root 2 and the radius of this circle is also root 2. So I can say that the third line that I am going to trace here is going to be a tangent to the circle with radius root 2 while it will be a cut to the circle having radius root 3. So I will be tracing now the line. The third line now I am going to trace. 
So let us trace that third line, which will be tangent to the second circle and will be a cot to the third circle. So this is the portion that we need to consider for n is equal to 2. So let me just write down what all points are representing. A, B, hum lik chuke hain. I'm going to write this one as P, Q, R, S. And by symmetry, we can say that P, Q and R, S are going to be similar. And now this one I'm going to write as L, N. The question says that what I need to do is, let us read the question once again. The question says that compute the sum of the length that we are going to get because of this curve. So what are the lengths that we need to calculate? The lengths that we need to calculate in this question are AB. I need to find out the length AB. Then I need to write down PQ length. Then we need RS length and then the length LN. That is going to be the answer to the question. Can we find out the length AB? Yes, it's very simple. AB is very simple because AB is nothing but the diameter of the smallest circle. The circle that we have traced with radius 1. So what is going to be the length of AB? AB is going to be equals to 2. Okay, AB ka value we will be getting as equals to 2. After getting the value of AB as 2, now let us move on to the length PQ plus RS. How we are going to do that? How we are going to find that? We will be finding it using the formula for length of chord of any circle. What I will be doing? For finding PQ plus RS, for finding PQ plus RS, I will actually be calculating PS distance. And from that, I will be subtracting QR distance. What is PS? PS is length of the chord, which will be 2 root over R square minus P square. R square minus P square. But how we are going to find out P square? That also we can do because we have the equation of line PQRS, right? So first of all, what I'm going to do here is I will be finding out the radius PS scale. The radius of the second circle. What is the radius of the circle? You can see the radius is root 2. So root over R square. That is 2 minus P square. P square means the perpendicular distance of this line from the center. The perpendicular distance of the line from the center, this distance. The line that we are considering is X plus Y equals to 1. That is why this perpendicular distance P, if I am talking about, it turns out to be root over 1 divided by. So root over 1 means it's only 1. So you can remove the square root. This will be 1 divided by root 2. Keeping it over here, r square minus p square gives me 2 root over 2 minus 1 by 2. Now coming to qr, how you are going to calculate qr? Similar way, it will be root 2 uh, root over r square minus p square. Let us see what we are getting. This will become 2 root over 3 divided by root 2. Then we have 2 by root 2. That means only root 2. Can I write my answer as root over 6? minus root 2 over here. So this is the answer that we are getting for PQ plus uh, RS, right? PQ plus RS length when you are calculating, you are getting this length as root 6 minus root 2. Now coming to the third length LM. LM is nothing but a tangent to the second circle. So I can say LM is totally the length of chord for the third circle. To calculate length of chord for the third circle, again I need the perpendicular distance. So I'm dropping the perpendicular from origin on this chord and you can see that this length turns out to be root 2. That is why we were saying that it is tangent to the second circle, right? We calculated the length of or the distance of this line from center 0, 0 and then we concluded that it actually touches the circle with radius root 2. That is why this perpendicular is root 2 and what is the radius of this third circle? It is root 3. So LM Kele, when you're writing, you can say that the length LM is equal to 2 root over R square means 3. And when you are talking about R square minus P square, so minus P square, mein what we are going to get is minus root 2 ka square. What we are getting here, it turns out to be equals to 2. Right? This is equals to 2. Now I got all the length. So let us complete the question and get the total length that is required in the question. So we will be writing first of all the first length AB. And the AB length turns out to be 2. The second length PQ plus RS, it is equal to root 6 minus root 2. And the third is 2. So I will be writing my answer as 2 plus root 6 minus root 2 plus 2. What is the answer that we are getting? It is 4 plus root 6 minus root over 2. So here is the answer to our question. Hope you enjoyed this beautiful question. So don't forget to hit the like button. Please share the video with your friends and family and subscribe the channel. See you in the next video. Till then, take care and bye-bye.